Hello there folks and welcome back to the geodynamics video lectures on the topic of brittle deformation and faulting. Here in lecture number three on this topic we're going to talk about rock friction. And so we have two goals for the lecture. The first is to introduce friction in rocks and we'll introduce that in a mathematical form and relatively simple relationship. And then we'll talk about a type of plasticity known as frictional plasticity. Now, friction in rocks ends up being something that's fairly important for deformation in the upper parts of the crust because fault slip is what accounts for a large portion of the deformation in the upper crust. And of course, uh, in order for a fault to slip, what must be overcome? Well, you don't need to pause the video for this because you probably have already guessed that it's friction. It's the frictional relationship between the two sides of the fault. The friction has to be overcome in order for the fault to slip. And only after exceeding that frictional resistance will slip occur on the fault or within a shear zone. And so this is um, known as frictional plasticity. The reason for that is that you'll remember this plasticity idea is that you have to reach a certain yield stress in order for deformation to occur. Here, you have to overcome friction in order for slip on the fault to occur, so frictional plasticity. Now, the basic relationship that we can work with looks like this, where we have this tau fs. This is a shear stress. Um, it's referred to as the static frictional stress. This is what needs to be overcome in order for fault slip to occur. And we say tau fs is equal to fs, which is a coefficient of static friction, times the normal stress. And so the normal stress would be the component of the stress between, for instance, here, this block sitting on an inclined plane, the component of the weight of that block that acts perpendicular to the surface is the normal stress. And so you can see here fn is simply mg times the cosine of theta, and then the shear component would be mg times the sine of theta. And so probably you've already seen this even in introductory kind of uh, physics. So our relationships, as you can see them here for sigma n and sigma s, the normal and shear stresses, are simply mg times the cosine of theta divided by a. So these are forces as given here. This is the normal force and the, the shear force or frictional force. And then if you want to have a stress, you can simply take that force and divide it by the area over which that, that force is acting. Now, typically in upper crustal rocks, the coefficient of static friction is about 0.85. And so my question for you at this point is, if we assume this value of the coefficient of static friction, what angle theta, or at what angle theta, would this block over here begin to slide down the inclined plane? And just note here that you can assume that the, the tau fs, the um, frictional shear stress, is equal to sigma s. And remember our definition for uh, this frictional relationship was that tau fs is equal to fs times sigma n. So go ahead and pause the video and come back when you have a number for the angle theta at which the block begins to slide down the inclined plane. Okay, let's see, what did you come up with? Well, we know a few things. I told you here that this tau fs is equal to sigma s and that we had defined the frictional relationship here to say that the frictional resistance was equal to fs times sigma n. So you can see tau fs here, tau fs here. You can basically just set those two things equal. So in other words, our shear stress sigma s, which is defined here, is equal to fs times sigma n, which is then put here. Obviously, you can see that you can drop mg and a because they're on both sides of the equation, and so you're left with sine of theta equals fs times the cosine of theta. If you divide the sine of theta by the cosine of theta, that is equal to the tangent of the angle theta, which is then equal to fs. And if you take the arc tangent of fs, you can then find your angle theta. You should have hopefully found something like 40 degrees. 
Now, as we have seen in the previous video lecture, upper crustal rocks generally behave as this elastic, perfectly plastic type of deformation where there is an elastic buildup of stress before the rock begins to fail and deform then plastically after failure. And so this plot here is a kind of typical plot for a measurement of rock strength from a rock mechanics experiment where you have a certain amount of uh, an increase in shear stress during the elastic regime where you're loading this rock and at some point deformation begins to deviate from that linear trend and curve over into what will eventually become basically a flat line here. This deviation is the start of the plastic type of deformation where the rock or the cylinder of rock as it often is is beginning to fracture and so the highest point here, the highest stress value you reach is what's known as the static friction. That's the maximum friction and then you'll see it gradually will decrease down to something where it levels off at a dynamic or steady state angle of friction. And you've probably had some kind of experience like this before where if you've ever had a heavy object you're trying to slide along on the floor, you need to kind of push it uh, a bit harder to get it moving and then once it's moving it can kind of slide along a little bit more easily. Now this um, observation is something that has turned into uh, a set of laws called Byerly's Law. The plots down here are basically showing uh, measurements of normal stress versus shear stress. So this is essentially relationships of frictional strength of different rock types. And so each one of these dots would represent some kind of measurement of uh, rock strength in a rock mechanics experiment. And this is the case for low stresses. So normal stress is up to about five megapascals. And you can see there's quite a bit of scatter here. And the best fit line has a slope that gives us that, um, that FS value, that coefficient of friction uh, of 0 0.85. And then if we go to higher normal stresses, so here we're going from 0 to up to about 2,000, we see a different relationship where the slope gets a little bit shallower and we get a uh, coefficient of friction of about 0 0.6 for higher values of stress. So this would apply to more uh, of the, the crust, whereas really this would be kind of the shallowest portion of the crust. Um, more generally speaking, for the upper crust as a whole, this 0 0.6 value is perhaps a better representation. And so, um, you know, this essential relationship between the coefficient of friction and the normal stresses um, for these two different um, normal stress ranges are what's known as Byerly's laws. All right, so that's it for this video lecture on uh, rock friction. And go ahead and take your quiz, and I'll see you for the next one.